All right, time for the second half of high tier. Starting off, we got Minecraft Steve. So this is a character that I thought was really bad at first. In some ways, I was right about his weaknesses, but I didn't realize just how absurd his strengths were actually gonna be. I thought characters had more answers of blocks than they do. But honestly, the thing about Steve is I feel like he has a few really overtuned things and like a few tools that characters in Ultimate just were not built to deal with. Like most characters don't have a great answer to blocks. Like jumping over them is not great, hitting them isn't great. You can't even kill them that well for a lot of characters. So most characters don't have an answer for that, which already gives them a lot of hard matchups for the opponents. And then added to the fact that like the mining mechanic makes him so powerful for the time. When he gets diamonds, he's just like, he's here. He's like somewhere in here. With diamonds, he's absurd. And it's not hard for me to get diamonds in a lot of matchups off of like lock camping, winning neutral a couple times. And then even outside of that, he has the Luigi effect of I hate you once and you die. Or maybe like twice in neutral, right? Yes, such absurd combos that like I don't know what they were thinking. It feels like a TS when I watch him do like up tilt, up tilt, up air, up tilt, up air, up blah blah blah, blah up smash, follow up with that, and like do like zero to eighties, and then someone's in disadvantage, and then he like back airs in the death. Add in minecart being one of the most overtuned tools in the game. Now, granted, that move is significantly worse offline than online, which is what everyone expected. But even despite that, it's such a significantly powerful tool. Because he can use that not just for like attacking you, but from ability. That he ends up securing himself as a high tier that probably has some really annoying matchups for his characters that can handle his kind of gimmicky game plan. But then a lot of characters just aren't going to handle that well. They're not going to be rushing him down well enough, not going to make it past the blocks. They're going to fight him close too much, they get combo too hard, and it's just going to be difficult. And I can see his character only rising if anything. But like, despite his mobility issues, like he's not going to be falling in my opinion. Alright, Krom. So this is my thing about Krom, because everyone says the bottles, why is Krom so much lower than Roy? And I don't even think of them as really similar characters. Like yes, frame data, hitboxes, all the same except for obviously sweet spot, sour spot stuff Roy has. But what happens a lot with Krom is a lot of characters in this game force Krom and Roy to approach. Because they have projectiles, big swords, whatever it is. And like this character just has, you know, sword hitboxes and good frame data and movement. Which is great, don't get me wrong. What happens is, a lot of times you're getting at people's faces anyway with these kind of characters. I think when Krom is doing like, okay damage output, like he does good damage output, he kills decently well but not particularly amazingly generally. But like, it's not enough sometimes when you consider how poor his disadvantage state is, right? And yeah, Roy gets juggled and edgeguard as well, but Krom especially is like, super easy to edgeguard. Like you throw him off stage with like some sort of like combo that carries him across the stage, set up something that forces like a double jump out or an air dodge and you can just kill him. Like his up B is too exploitable along with his giant disadvantage state. He doesn't have enough like cheese to make up for it. He doesn't have any like game breaking tricks or like cheese or just other dumb things that can really like carry him. He's just kind of almost playing an honest game plan where it's like it's overwhelming to uh, outspace him. It's overwhelming to chase him. His frame data is very scary. His boxes are very nice. But you know like exactly what you're getting. And it's like not scary enough to be any higher. Now Lucina. I don't know if you're gonna say the buzz. How is Lucina only here? So the thing about her is she just is so blatantly like I mean simple, right? She's effective at what she does, but kind of similar to a Krom where it's like she doesn't have any like super broken like cheese or anything that really makes her like scary to deal with. It's just like alright. Really solid button, solid game plan, solid everything. And that's good enough to be a high tier, but being solid everywhere isn't good enough to be a top tier in this game. I know people are gonna say, oh, but like, just put her in a top tier because reasons, and no, no, I mean, this, this is fine. I also think that she has quite a bit of trouble with characters that are ranger, characters that are really fast, or characters with like a good projectile game, which are all like very common traits for characters to have. What's up guys, if you love the analytical content I provide to this channel, feel free to check out my Patreon, where I post up analysis of top player matches and lessons I give to people so you can see my thought process when looking at the game and explaining the game to other people. Hope you check it out. Next up, you have Cloud. This character is, I initially put him as top tier in my uh, token tier list and I dropped him down a bit because I realized yeah, I'm capping a little bit too much with this placement. He has a lot of similar strengths to the Krom. The main issue is his frame data is a lot worse, so he's very easy to parry. But otherwise, like, I, I think Limit is such a strong mechanic because unlike Krom where he has to approach people, Cloud can choose to just get Limit instead. 
and then like approach you with extremely fast mobility. He can cheese you super hard and basically the limit factor really helps a lot because you're forced to fight Cloud um, more aggressively than a lot of other sorties. And sorties are always really good at keeping people out and punish them for being too aggressive. So that just kind of fits into the gameplay super well. Big, powerful hitboxes. He's pretty heavy. And a lot of characters just don't want to deal with this. A lot of characters can't quite get in on this character in the first place. Even though a lot of the top tiers handle him fine. I'd say a lot of the characters below top tier don't want to see Cloud in Bracket. Now Falcon made a bit of a controversial take to be honest being here, but this character has been doing very well in Bracket offline since Bogan ending. Fatality's been doing well, but then there's also other Falcons in a lot of regions doing pretty well actually. And it makes sense. Extremely fast character, <clears throat> solid frame data, extremely good combo game. So like his neutral is good because he's so fast. And he has a lot of burst options that like, even though he can't space that well, he kind of makes up for having bad spacing tools with just running around and bursting you down for any mistake. Ah, you with a move, dash grab. Ah, you swung poorly, I'm gonna armor through with side B. And that leads to so much damage. Nair leads into so much damage on strings. Down throw into like up air strings can lead to like knees. His edge guard can be really solid with off stage nairs, we can fares, up B's, downers, like he is really really explosive kill power he is extremely good everywhere in advantage seat. juggling edge guarding ledge trapping and like his only weaknesses are not having a projectile but his speed and his burst options basically make him a projectile and his recovery which honestly it's people act like it's worse than it is it's still pretty poor but he can mix up his recovery well enough because he has quite a big like grab box on his up b and his up b is also like Part of the challenge, I meant grab box as in ledge grab box, but even challenging it, a lot of times grab you with his up B and you're like, wait, how did this happen? So that's a, a really big deal that his main weakness isn't even that exploitable and he's so strong. If he ever gets going, he's gonna get going at least once or twice. Like, that's just how he is. I will say STI can hurt his combo game a bit if you know what you're doing, make him less explosive, but like, you're still taking so much damage and have to find way back to neutral versus him, which is really hard. And next up, Greninja. So I know a lot of people think Greninja is a top tier. And I understand that, but this character is everything you want in a character held back by being a little bit too linear and exploited with this finish. Because it reminds me a lot of Inkling where like this character has some really good tools, like replace like back air with dash attack, shuriken solid. But then like his slow aerials means a lot of times you can see him jumping at you and just react to his jump ins with parries. And his ground game is very much like he has dash attack, he has good movement speed, he has like run up down tilt. But he doesn't have much he can work with because the aerials have a lot of issues. So you kind of know what he's going to do. It makes him a lot easier to deal with than like what people might think. Add to the fact that he's light and his disadvantage See, it's not awful. He has mix-ups and disadvantage, but like all his mix-ups are exploitable. If you read the side B or the up B, you can easily kill him. So it's a little bit scary to play him. And he sometimes has trouble killing him. He's not getting like his kill combos going, which is like certain moves hit leads to combos and you have to not DI them generally to like die to them so it's like it's a bit unreliable at points to get the kills going and his damage output also isn't exactly stellar it's good but it's not stellar all right terry terry is a monster remember i said like falcon's a moving projectile terry's kind of the same way where he's a moving projectile who doesn't quite have the same burst scheme but instead when he gets close to you his pressure game is so much better because falcon has like weave in and out where terry just kind of jabs your shield and that's a huge mix-up game and it's the fact that you're not killing him uh, below 100% he gets go meter, which is when he becomes absolutely busted. He gets things like down tilt until like you die, falling there until you die. Like there's so many ways you just die and take a lot of damage when you fight him if you're not killing him. And he's heavy. And similar to Falcon, his recovery isn't as exploitable as people think. It's sure it's not great. And if you read it, like you can kill him for it, you read him hard. But if you guess wrong, he's up in a slightly wrong position. Like there's so many ways to mess up edge guarding him. And not only does he get back, he can reverse you. And when he's in advanced state, he's not great at exploiting it to be fair. He doesn't have like big hitboxes, but he's so fast. And like if you're in the corner, it, it's just hard to escape that pressure. And also to auto turnaround is a dumb mechanic. The only thing holding him back is that there are a lot of sorties and projectiles that just are a bit too much of a problem for him. Not even like hard losing matchups, but like among the top tiers, especially, I think he loses prior to most of them somewhat. All right, Pac-Man. The thing with Pac-Man is, I think this character is overrated by a lot of people. And I don't blame them, T is very good, he always shows off what this character can do. But I look at the character and go, eh, he's really solid. Like, Hydrant's 
really dumb because it forces you to play his game plan. But the thing is, you can use Hydrogen against him. You can get his items and use them against him. You can exploit his lack of range. You can exploit his recovery. There's a lot of things you can exploit. You can even challenge Hydra when he drops it. You can pressure really hard. I mean, it's not like he's bad, but despite all these weaknesses, he still is a zoner that forces you to approach with an amazingly versatile, powerful charge projectile while having a good recovery, while having extremely good frame data. He has really good shield options, is really hard to fight up close, and knocks you away easily as a result. So like, you kind of have to outplay him in the like, getting close to him game plan and then the same close to him game plan. And because of his good frame that he can actually pressure people and combo them very well for his owner and like blow up stocks. So very solid, almost a top tier, but I do think a lot of like his like strengths and tricks have these little, like these nuanced ways to punish them that people aren't good enough at taking advantage of. Next up we got Sheep. This is a character who is absolutely absurd to fight. Like when you're fighting a good Sheik, it feels hopeless. She's just too fast. She has needles. Forward air pressure is insane. Her tilts are so hard to like punish even when they're punishable because they're so fast. And the only weakness she has is that legit is just her weight, damage output, and kill power. That's it. And like even that she has good kill setups. Like honestly, she can set up up airs and up smashes pretty well in bouncing fishes even. She does have decent damage output, but honestly that does hold her back. When you know the Sheik matchup, you know to trade with her a lot, like throw out hitboxes, force her to deal with them. She can't contest hitboxes that well, she has to punish them or hit you first. Make these trades, don't be afraid of taking damage versus her. Make sure to DI a lot of her kill setups because she definitely loses a lot of setups on good DI and SDI. So make sure to do that preemptively. It's not going to stop her from being an absolute menace in neutral and advantage state and even the smash state sort of the keeper is she's so tricky to lock down. But it is going to differentiate her from the top tiers that like all have this BS that you just kind of can't avoid. And then Peach Daisy. These are characters that like, if you're playing like base game characters, they still feel like top tiers to fight. They're absurd. But so many of the top tiers now are characters that are buffed or like DLC characters with projectiles and good zoning tools. And Peach and Daisy just struggle a little bit too much to approach them. Because if you're not like zoning them out very hard, then they're absurd. Like their up close game is just Second to none almost. Combo game, kill a game, edge guard game, juggling game, let up game, turnips are absurd. And even if you like your sortie, but like you're not a great sortie, like she'll eventually get close to you using good float movement and just generally good ground movement. And just suddenly she's in your face shielding and it's so scary to deal with that. She is just an absolute monster when she gets pressure going. She's an absolute monster approach uh, to approach because her defense is so good using like turnips to force approaches and then like spacing you out with like floats. I, I could be on the rating card to be fair, but it's like it's gonna be hard to judge her because her meta is kind of like come um, hit like a standstill for certain reasons. And that's a high tier, all these very powerful characters, especially like, so if I had to make like a gaps in the high tier, it's like, I think there's like a decent size gap between like Bowser and like Youngwink. And then another decent size one, between like, um, I'd say between like Krom and Lucina, where's like the other big gap. So like, you know, all these characters are pretty close. All these characters are pretty close. These characters are pretty close. And all right, guys, I'll see you in the next video for top tier.